The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then should I fear? That's Psalm 27, verse 1. Let me repeat it. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then should I fear? In fact, would you join me in that affirmation once? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? Light and salvation are absolute opposites of darkness and fear and despair, both of which are, as we know, painfully well, breed fear. God's presence dispels fear. This is easy to say, but as we all know painfully well, it's difficult to wrap our minds around it and know its truth, especially if you, like me, are genetically wired to be anxious and afraid of just about everything. I have a lot to learn about God's light and God's salvation. The psalmist, on the other hand, confidently declared this in the midst of his enemies who were intent on destroying him. From whence his confidence? To be sure, from his own experiences of God's faithfulness. But even more, let me suggest that David knew the centerpiece of Israel's covenant history. He knew that God's radiant presence in fire, in other words, light, was powerfully joined together with deliverance from bondage in Egypt, salvation. Breaking the dark despair of their slavery, God delivered his people, keeping vigil through the night. Like a mother with a sick child, God kept watch over his people. And as Israel marched out of Egypt, God was visibly present in the pillar of cloud and fire, guiding them, giving them light, and protecting them from the hostile Egyptians. This great salvation was not without its tense moments. Caught between the raging Egyptians and the raging sea, Israel actually lost heart in that darkness. But they knew enough to call on the Lord, and God fought for them. In our seasons of deepest gloom, we can trust God to answer as we cry out to him. Guidance and protection are critical in dispelling fear, the Israelites, David's, ours. And God in his mercy provided them, and he still does. But something even more transformative was about to happen back then. God was not just lighting Israel's way out of Egyptian bondage, a picture of our own gloomy entrapment to sin. He was guiding them to Mount Sinai, where they would become his treasured possession and where they would have the privilege of meeting with him. Blazing fire accompanied that meeting at Sinai as God declared his covenant with Israel. Further, God purposed to dwell in the tabernacle. That's another word for a mobile sanctuary, tent. God purposed to set up camp in their midst and when the Israelites had finished assembling that tent of worship, God came with his glory. Glory is a word that has everything to do with God's radiant presence and light. And he appeared again in a cloud in that context. Knowing this history, now hear a literal rendition of John 1.14. The word became flesh and tented among us. We have seen his glory the glory of the one and only, come from the Father and full of grace and truth. Here in Jesus are echoes and a fulfillment of God's presence as we first encountered it in the tabernacle. And further, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. David's supreme desire was that he might dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of his life, gazing upon the radiant beauty of the Lord and finding shelter and safety in the tabernacle, the tent so also we find shelter and safety in the word become flesh who came to tent among us. One final thing, God's presence in fire is not tame. That brilliant fire not only protects and guides, it refines us and it burns away all the rubbish that is an utter affront to God's holiness. So, let us come today with proper fear and trembling into his radiant presence where our own destructive fears and anxieties are banished. The Lord Jesus is our light and our salvation. Whom then shall we fear? Please rise as we sing together, led by Sarah. <laughs>